try. If you mess up, just get back on. You know how you did when you, when you were fasting food. <laughs> No negative words or complaining. I don't care what the news is. Come on, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No easy task. No easy task. Yes, sir. Your pastor will struggle through this. <laughs> because there's a lot. If you let the enemy mess with your mind, right. you'll find a lot to complain. But if you renew your mind, on, you'll find a lot to be grateful for. Yes, Amen. Sir. Yes, sir. Huh? Let me tell you, every word that starts with re in the Bible is so important. Renew, restore, Amen. reconcile. Huh? We need all those reads. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So we got to fast this week. Come on, say amen. Amen. I want to leave you with this thought. Maybe part of the problem is we learned last week that thoughts are expressed through words. Is that true? And words are seeds. How many of y'all remember us teaching that? Words are what? Seeds. And you reap. Did y'all hear what I just said? That's it. Words are seeds, yes, sir. and I reap what I sow. Amen. I'm just going to leave you with this thought, get us through the week. What I say is planted, yeah. and when I come back to get a harvest, I shouldn't be surprised when I receive my harvest based on what I have planted. Yes, sir. If you plant, since we fasted, if you plant complaints, mm -hmm. complaining, murmuring, you will reap more things to complain about. Amen. Come on, let the church say amen. amen. I mean, I said it last week, but I just want to do a recap. Yes, uh, can I just share this with you? We've got to ask the Lord to help us to recondition our mind. You ever see people when they complain? I mean, a real complainer. Anybody know any people that are real complainers? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. Some of, some, I'm going to go and be honest, some of y'all. <laughs> Sometimes I take it, this is y'all time. Some of y'all complain so much that we hate to even ask you how you're doing. <laughs> you ever hear somebody, if you just ask them how they're doing, man, oh, you done already messed your whole day up because they got a <laughs> list, they got a grocery list. Let yeah. me, listen, and they, they almost look like they've been waiting on you to ask. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you. By the time you get off the phone, your spirit is heavy. Drain. You ever have people, after you talk to them, you got to just shake yourself and Drain. get, man, just kind of get re, just kind of, man, just get, bring yourself back yeah. together? Yeah, yeah. Get a glass of water. Huh? Got to get a glass of water. <laughs> That's the truth. Get a recharge. Now, have you ever noticed that those people always have something to complain about? Yes, sir. Which proves my idea that I'm teaching today. Amen. They're planting... Complaining. Yeah. And they're reaping more things. To complain about. To, now, what would happen if we stopped complaining and start planting praise? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. yeah. What would happen if we started to plant praise and thanksgiving? I mean, look at it. If I plant thanksgiving, I'm going to reap more things to be thankful for. If I plant praise, I'm going to reap more things to praise him for. Amen. If you, how many of y'all believe that there's a law called sowing and reaping? Amen. If you believe it, then why y'all sitting there, you ought to be excited right now. I'm starting right now. Amen. Amen. But pastor, I don't just want to hear a good word. Help me to do it. Because the truth is, the church loves to tell you how to live right but they tell you how to live right all wrong. <laughs> the truth is, it's easy to tell, for me to tell you to think better and change your mind, but nobody tells us how to make the, the, the quantum leap. Wow. How do I really begin to change how I think? And because we don't teach people how to do it, they hear good messages and then they're left helpless. No amen. So I want to make it plain today. Everybody got 10 minutes. Come on, 10 minutes. Say amen. amen. 10 minutes for your life. We're already fasting. No what this week? No Husbands, no complaining. That's right. Wives, no complaining. Amen. If their house don't get clean, just tell them to clean it and say, thank you, Lord. Amen. But do not complain. When you go out this evening, don't complain. Oh, well, y'all ain't hearing me today. When you get in the car, don't start complaining. Amen. Every time, listen, you want to see your blood pressure drop? Stop complaining and worrying and start giving thanks. Yes. Amen. I don't
don't know who that's for, but you better take it. That's good. Now, here's a story. Y'all know it. I'm, I'm on, I only need seven minutes now. Amen. There's a Syrophoenician woman. Y'all remember the woman? Amen. Known as the woman where? Deacon, you got it? Amen. 15th chapter? Verse 21. Listen. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre uh -huh. and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. <laughs> Isn't that something? People coming to see Jesus. And the number one people that stopped people from getting to Jesus was the disciples. Mm. Huh? She hadn't said nothing to them. Come on, y'all. Come on, Deacon. But he answered and oh, said... What chapter you in? Uh, Matthew 15. Listen. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Come on. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Uh-huh. And she said, Truth, Lord. Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from, from their the master's, master's table. table. Come on. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. From that very hour. Now, is there another parable? Is there, is there another story after that? What verse did we stop? Uh, we stopped at 28. Okay. Amen. And there was some other miracles right after that. All right. Amen. Verse 30. Listen. And great multitudes came unto him, saying, having having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, Come and on. cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Come on. Insomuch that the multitude wondered, when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and uh -huh. they glorified the God of Israel. And they glorified the God of Israel. Amen. Huh? Somebody wanted to know why we're going through. Why does he let us suffer? I, I, I'm going to answer the question next week, but let me give you a quick answer to take with you today. Uh, the reason why God allows his children to suffer, all right, is number one, is because he's going to get glory out of your suffering. Amen. Amen. Uh, but the topic is faith. Everybody say faith. faith. I can go on and on with the miracles, but I'm going to stop because there was another story about a woman. And the Bible says, she said, if I could just reach out touch the hem of his garment. Huh? and touch the hem of his garment. Of his garment. Amen. But if you go back, the Bible says something real strange. The Bible says she, she heard about Jesus. Mm. I want to talk to you for five minutes now about how to recondition your mind. All right. Okay? Well, Pastor, I need faith. I need faith. Uh, let me give you a word. Your victory and whatever you're going through is connected to what you hear. Okay, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Yeah. Whatever you're dealing with, if you're waiting on a job, if you're waiting on a husband, if you're waiting on a wife, if you're waiting on your children to get right, whatever you're dealing with and waiting on, it's connected. Your victory is connected to what you hear. Yeah. Everybody say hear. Hear. Now, hearing is important because in every miracle you see in the Bible, faith Comes out here. is mentioned. And when Jesus said, your faith, have made you whole, we tend to pay all the attention to the faith. Oh, we can do something if you got big faith. But we don't spend time as ministers telling you how faith comes. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Hearing. And hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I only need three more minutes. Listen good. The end of the story told us her faith made her whole. Even when we just read, your faith have made you whole. But where did she get it from? She got faith because the Bible says in one place, and she heard Jesus was coming. Amen. Okay, I need y'all to get this. I need you to get this. What do you mean here? The devil knows how important it is to make sure you hear the wrong thing. Yes, Lord. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Amen. You see, if I can control what you hear, then I can control what you believe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. Because faith is what you believe. Right, right. If I can control what you hear, I can control what you believe. And if I can control what you believe, 
I can control what you receive. Amen. Okay? Okay, so hold on. Before you can believe, you got to what? Hear. Let me say it again. Come on, y'all. We're going to shout Amen. in three minutes. Before you can believe, you got to what? Hear. You got to hear. And before, watch this, you can hear. You need the word of God to become planted in your ear. Now, hold on for a minute. Which is really, you need to hear it, but not physically. It needs to be received from a spiritual standpoint. Now, stay with me. I want you to see this. There are four gates to everything that protects your heart. In other words, your heart is protected by four gates. Give me Proverbs 4. I'm just going to leave you with this because people ask me, how do I do it, Pastor? How do I do it? I'm getting ready to show you why we fast in this week. Okay, for, Proverbs 4. Mm -hmm. See if it's verse 20, 20. My son. My son. Attend to my words. Oh, listen to my words, my son. Incline thine ear oh, unto my son. incline my what? Ear. Fine tune my ear, Lord. Why? For they are life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. Hold on, read that again. Amen. My son, yes. attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Uh -huh. Let them not depart from thine eyes and keep them in the midst of thy heart. What do you see here? Heart. You see ears and eyes. Why four? Because you got two ears and two eyes. Those are the four gates. Can I tell you something? He's saying here, whatever you do, Word Church, if you want to change your mind, guard your heart. Amen. Guard your heart. Everybody say, guard your heart. Guard your heart. Now, your heart ain't the thing that's pumping blood. Your heart represents your spirit, okay? And let me tell you what's going on. We're being defeated from our own mouths Come on, man. Wow. because we are not protecting what's coming in our ears. Amen. So we believe that, we ain't go, that we're not going to make it because we keep hearing we're not going to make it. Come on, man. We believe we're never going to be in love again because we keep hearing. We're oh, y'all not listening to me. Amen. We don't believe we're ever going to get another job or start a new business because we keep hearing it. Yeah. And God's saying if you're ever going to see the harvest come in your life, you've got to guard your ears and guard your eyes. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me today. Now, in order to do that, you got to hang up the phone on some people. Amen. Amen. Oh, I, need, I feel like preaching Amen. right now. You're going to have to say, Mama, I'm going to call you back. Because, see, see, some of us got grandmamas and mamas and granddaddies and aunties and friends and brothers and co-workers and people that we love. And every time they talk to you, yeah. they got something to say about why it ain't going to work. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't even think about it. i just leave it alone. And you ever had people, i just give up on that dream and try to do something else. And after a while, that stuff begins to just take over your mind. And after a while, what you heard over and over from those people, you begin to believe it. But I got news. The Bible says, guard your ears. Yes. So that if you got to hang up the phone, Amen. Amen. tell somebody, hang up the phone. Hang up the phone. Now, hold on. I got to check my hearing. I'm almost done. So the Bible said the first thing, and one of the miracles said she heard. Amen. Huh? She heard. Uh, what you mean she heard? Uh, I'm looking for that one store where uh, she said, I reach out, uh, if I could just touch. She said, she heard about Jesus. And, and I'm going to tell you what's so funny about hearing because we're suffering in our marriages, but we keep hearing housewives of Atlanta. Amen. Mark 7. Did you hear what I just said? We want our relationships to stop failing, but we're right, watching right, the yeah. days of our lives. Right. What's the soap opera name? I don't know. Uh, when I was young, it used to be the world turns. Young and the restless. Oh, y'all quiet in here now. Yes, sir. I, I got a question. How much, how much are you expecting from your relationship if all day your ears and your eyes are watching drama? Yes. And that drama is getting into your ears. And when you, watch this, when you hear drama, you begin to receive and believe drama. Yeah. And now when you open your mouth, you yeah. speak drama. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
So now you're sowing seeds of drama in your life. Amen. Not, oh, come on, somebody. Not because you want it, but because that's what you are hearing. Yeah. And the Bible says what you believe is coming in through what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm in trouble now. Yes, sir. Pastor Rob, cut Facebook off. What I got to do? Cut it off because I see some stuff. That's right. Huh? I see some stuff that's messing up my hearing. Amen. Oh, y'all quiet here. Huh? So the next thing, if you look up that story, when the Bible says she was, uh, she heard. Verse 25. What is that? Mark, Mark 7 and 25. Come on. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him uh -huh. and came and fell at his feet. Yes. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation. Come on. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Now, now hold on, hold on, hold on. It don't matter which miracle you go to. You can take this one, the woman who said, touch the hem of her garment. Yeah. It, it doesn't even matter which one. It doesn't even matter. Every one of them is based on what they heard. That's what I want you to see. Okay, I want you to get this. So she heard, and then the Bible says, stretched out. Mm. Then you would think the next thing she did was she stretched out toward him, but that's not the next thing. The Bible says next, she said something. Mm. Now, y'all missed it. Before she even reached to Jesus, she said something. Do you know what she said? She said, if I could just touch. Hold on. But it's closed. Huh? I shall be whole. That's what she said. Amen. Now, let me tell you why that's important. In the Amplified, the Bible says she kept saying. And that makes a difference. She didn't just say one time, if I could just touch Jesus, I'd be all right. The Bible says she kept saying. Do you know what that tells me? Yeah. That tells me that somebody else was saying something else to her. Yeah, word. Word. You say, well, the Bible don't say that. Listen, the Bible does say it, but you got to understand it. You see, there's one thing that was talking to her for sure. Her own mind. Satan was in her mind telling her, honey, you've been sick a long time. You've been messed up a long time. But the Bible says she kept what? Saying. Mm. Now, why is this important? Because the first thing she did was what? She heard. And then from what she heard, she was able to speak. She heard that Jesus could heal. She heard Jesus could deliver. She heard the word. Now she could now speak yeah, yeah. what she heard. Amen. I'm almost done. All right. So now that tells me the most important two things that have to do with me shaping my mind uh -huh. watch is watching what I hear watch what you say. and watching what I say. That's right. Now let me tell you why that's important. Because I can only speak what I hear. Yeah. So the Bible says the tongue speaketh the issues. What? Of the heart. Amen. Everything that's going on in your life, oh, y'all are quiet in here. Yes, Everything that's going on in your life, well. it's being, watch this, coming out of your mouth, uh -huh. but it started in your heart. Amen. Uh -huh. Okay? I'm almost finished. Sure. Well, Pastor, I don't know how to stop talking negative. I grew up in a house where we just cuss and talk crazy. And, you know, I, I, I just, I'm a realist. You know how we do. I, I just yeah. call it what it is. And if it's negative, I say it. Well, let me help you out. We're trying to change people's talk. But we're not addressing what the hearing. hearing. Right. Now, let me tell you what I found out. I found out that if you have a child, and when they get to a certain age before they're getting ready to start school, they begin to notice the signs of a child that has trouble with their speech. You ever see a child have a problem with their speech? Amen. And they go to they go somewhere so they can, you know, uh, speech class. Uh, yeah, that speech class. Yeah. Even in elementary school, they offer classes to help the child develop in their speech. Amen. Right. But let me help y'all. When you go to the doctor because your child can't speak correct correctly, the doctor don't say, "Open your mouth. <laughs> let me check your tongue." Mm -mm. Whenever there's an issue with your speech. The first thing the doctor check is your ear. Is your hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all didn't catch that. Yes, sir. If you want to know why you ain't talking right, Come on, man. Amen. 
Let the doctor check on what you're hearing. Come on now. Okay. Okay. Now here's the part you missed. Well, Pastor, I ain't gonna talk to nobody. Everybody I be around ain't negative. And I understand. So let me help you out. The Bible says she kept saying it. You know what that tells me also? The fact that she kept saying it, the rules still apply. See, I found out sometimes people ain't going to believe what God promised you. Yeah. Amen. Okay, y'all ain't going to hear me. Sometimes the people you thought would be behind you ain't going to support your dream. Sometimes folks are not going to clap and say amen. And they're going to look at you and say, honey, that thing ain't going to work. But I got news for you. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. And if you're going to ever plant a seed of success, it's got to come out of your mouth. Yes. But pastor, how do I hear good things when they ain't nothing but bad folks sitting around me? I'll tell you what you do. I heard somebody say, encourage yourself. Yes. Well, hold on, I feel like preaching yes. right now. In other words, let me help you out. Every time I say I'm going to make it. Oh, I feel well. Come on, somebody. Yes, Every time I say I'm going to get the job. Every time I say this thing is going to work out yes, for me. Sir. Every time I say, Lord, Victory. I trust you. Victory. Every time I say your promises are yea and amen. amen. Every time I turn around and I say he'll make you the head amen. and not the tail. Amen. Every time I say the Lord says no weapon. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Hallelujah. Every time I lift up my hands in the car on, at the stoplight and sing praise music. Every time I say glory, hallelujah. Yes, Every time I say thank you, Lord, anyhow. Yes, Lord. I didn't have to hear it from nobody else because every time I opened my mouth, I heard myself say, oh, y'all didn't hear me today. If you're running short on good news, learn how to get in the mirror. And if you ain't got nobody to call, look right in the mirror. Adjust the rear view mirror yes. and look at yourself and encourage yourself. Yes, oh, I dare you to stand up today and just Amen. preach to yourself. Amen. I dare you to say you can't lose. Amen. You are a winner. Yes. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a power-filled woman. I am a power-filled man. Amen. You are walking in prosperity. I am blessed, too blessed to be stressed. I dare you just let the devil know that I can hear it because I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak life because the Bible says life and death is in the tongue. We want to, oh y'all ain't hearing me, we want to get a bright future but we want to talk about our dark past. Maybe if you start talking about the sunshine and how God's got some stuff in store for you. Maybe if you start talking about how God has made a way and if God says it, that settles it. Then maybe you'll plant some seeds. Uh, anybody here got some praise seeds? This week, no complaining. This week, no grumbling. No murmuring. I'm going to praise Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. I dare somebody. I dare somebody. Say, Lord, I already heard what you did for my sister. I heard what you did for my grandmother. I heard what you did for my grandfather. Now, Lord, the same God that kept Isaac, that kept Abraham, that held on to Jacob is the same God that'll bring me through. Yes, it all starts with your ears. It all starts with your ears. Amen. You see, I've been walking around depressed because I let the wrong things in my ear. But it's time just to declare that the word of God is true. And I believe everything that God has said for me. Amen. Is there anybody in here that got enough guts? They got enough Holy Ghost that they say, Lord, Lord, I stretch my hand because I know, I know that if I could touch the hem of your God, that I will be made whole. Oh, the devil might talk to you. The devil might try to frustrate you. The devil might mess with you. 
and you can't stop the devil from talking. But let me tell you something. You might not be able to stop the enemy from running his mouth, but you can sure make sure that the enemy don't get the last word. Every time you talk, remind him that my God should keep my mind in perfect peace. Oh, that he told me in his word. Look at somebody and tell him in his word. I'm hearing his word. I'm cutting off soap operas. I'm cutting off real housewives. I'm cutting off social media. Whatever it takes, I need to hear from people. I need to hear from some mothers. I need to hear from some elders. I need to hear not from the Calvary, not from the peanut committee, not from all the folks on Facebook, but I need some Thundercats that'll rise up and lay down on their face and say, if my people that are called by my name shall humble my, oh, turn from their wicked way. Oh, do I got a prayer church? Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. I'm getting ready to go home. But what I heard the Bible say, said she reached out and my God, she got what she asked for. I don't know if you think it's too late. I don't know if you think you're already finished, but I got good news for everybody in the place. God is still in the miracle working business. God is still saving folk today. God is still giving folk favor, blessing folk socks off. Has he done anything for you? Has he turned anybody around? I know it looked like they closed the door, but is there anybody that say today, I'm opening up a new day. I'm opening up new words. I'm flowing from my heart with praise and thanksgiving. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah every time the devil try to attack you and he attack your mind and he attack your self-esteem and make you think you ain't gonna never do better. Tell the devil, I am better. I am already better. What God has for me, it is for me. Oh, y'all don't hear me.